Okay, hi. I'm on Sprague Street, Sprague Avenue, with Marlene Cote. Did I get that right? Cody. Cody. Okay, <laughs> Marlene Cody. Um, Marlene's a good friend of mine, and Marlene is a previous board member of the Sewer Fairness Alliance. She was one of the early members in, and has been very instrumental in our cause. So today's agenda is Marlene saw my video on the um, landscaping around the pump, and she asked me, could I take a look at hers? And I said, sure. So we're going to look at the hers today. We'll do a little inspection and we'll run a test to see if she has a problem. Then I was going to talk with Marlene and give her a brief update on the Markham case. Marlene was one of our contributors on the Markham case, so I have a little thank you note for her. And we'll have a little update there. And then Marlene, I was talking with her yesterday. She also told me about she saw the, board, the select board meeting on Monday. And there was a discussion on how you might get your septic tank back. So we'll follow up with those three items. Stay tuned. Do not change the channel. Okay, first for the inspection of her of her tank, of her, of her pump, her grinder pump cover. Okay, first I checked the uh, fasteners. The fasteners look good. I'm not going to touch them. I just noticed none of them are loose. The washers are in place. Now, I, when I came over yesterday, or two days ago, I was going to do this video and it started raining so we couldn't do it. But I did notice that her, the ground, it looked like she might have a fail on her hand because the, the ground had built up. Uh, there's a line on the grinder pump. Oh, in fact, here it is. It actually says ground. It's the ground line. Oh. Now, if that's buried, then that's an indication that you have a problem. You should be able to see that. And notice it's directly underneath where the overflow is, okay? And, um, if it's a little bit over, it might be okay, but to be safe, you want it at this level all the way around the pump. Okay, that's the idea. So um, Marlene might have a pass now because of the work that she's done. Now, I know that in my last video, it was somewhat confusing what I was explaining. First, I should say that today's video is entirely social distanced. Mar Marlene's not wearing a mask, but don't worry about it because I'm not going to get within six feet. Okay, now. Here is the grinder pump. Now, the wet well is the lower half. That's full of water. The dry well is the upper half. The overflow is right about here. Now, what this diagram doesn't show are these vent tubes. They're in where the cutoff would be, and they've been taken out of the picture. When This is where the water comes in. And when as a backup, this water level will fill and fill and fill and fill and fill. And if there's no drain in your basement, it'll fill until it comes out right here. Okay, now one of the reasons why you don't want to have this covered or, or, or covered with landscaping, one reason is that it needs to breathe. But honestly, the real reason for you is because you don't want a backup to fill into your dry well. Anyone would never tell you that that could ever happen, but it, it can happen. So what we're going to do with Marlene here is we're going to actually add water from a hose right at this spot. And we're going to just let it pull up until we can see it flowing away from the pump. And the idea is if the level does not come up to where the gasket would be, then it's going to be a pass. And this has never been done before, so let's just see what happens. Marlene, can you get in the hose over? Okay. I'll get a different angle on this. Okay, just put the hose, just run it right here. Just hold it right there, okay? Okay. Can you, you can almost stand on that if you want. Yep. Okay. Now you can see the water is filling up. Eventually, eventually it's going to pour away because the, her ground does slope away from her house. So see it filling up? It's filling up closer and closer to where the gasket is, but now it's actually starting to run downhill. Once it starts running downhill, Pretty much, she's in the clear, because it's just going to continue to do that. Now, if Marlene came out one day and took a look at her pump and it looked like this, <laughs> she would know that she had a failure and that it's been overflowing, okay? Right. And um, this can happen. Sometimes it fails without the alarm going off, and you don't know that it failed until you smell it. Or, or if the pump is really close to your house like this one, you'd actually see it. Okay, so this is going to be a pass, okay? Yay! You can go turn off your uh, hose now, or you can throw it aside if you have no concern about it. Um, now, that brings us to the award ceremony. <laughs> okay, Marlene, uh, I, I'm going to 
kind of reach over to you. Okay, there it is. That's your thank you note. You don't thank have to open it now. Much. Marlene was actually one of our contributors that contributed more than once. She contributed early on when we were raising funds for the case, and then when the case was going to court, she contributed again. Uh, this was a class action suit. It, uh, it was Markham's and the Sewer Fairness Alliance against the town of Chelmsford. And um, I, can't, we can't, I can't tell you all the details of the case because there was a settlement. Settlement had two portions. One which was a new grinder pump appeal policy. That's posted on our website. And then there is a portion of the settlement which is confidential. It can't be disclosed publicly. That's only privy to the parties of the suit. So we're not going to talk about that today. But I did want to talk with Marlene briefly about the select board meeting. Um, they talked about the um, capacity crunch at uh, Lowell Wastewater. Lowell Wastewater at facility at Duck Island has a capacity, a rated capacity of 32 million gallons per day. Chelmsford has an allotment of 3.01 gallons per day. And it turns out if you add up our measured flow, plus you make an, an, account, an accounting of projects that are coming online, according to the bookkeeping, you actually come out exactly to 3.01, which means that, honestly, we're probably over it already. Mm -hmm. But the, 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 there's been a moratorium on new sewer connections in town, and there will be a tri-board meeting coming up, which will include the board of select, select board, it will include the board of health, it will include the planning board, and a representative from Weston and Sampson to discuss what can be done in the near term, mid term, and long term. Um, Paul, our town manager, has suggested that he will be filing a warrant for the fall town meeting, which will not require tie ins to sewer, which means that if you were to have a new house, you would not be able, in fact, you wouldn't be able to tie into the sewer, and you would be allowed to do on site, and that means a septic tank. And what this probably implies is people can probably go back to their septic system if only it hadn't been destroyed. Um, but the thing is, looking forward, um, the, the attitude on the septic system has changed. Uh, when I was on the grinder pump committee, the town council from Copelman and Page uh, reassured us that forcing people to tie in with grinder pumps had nothing to do with the financial aspect of, of supporting the system. And it had entirely to do with the environmental concern that um, public sewerage was the preferred option, was the term that he used. Uh, at the board, select board meeting last night, town manager actually said that returning your wastewater to the ground is now actually environmentally preferred. Now, if that's not head spinning enough, <laughs> I highly recommend that you watch the select board meeting. Uh, it's a long meeting, but the section on the wastewater is between after between one and two hours. They discuss the situation there. And it could have some implications on the use of grinder pumps in town. Um, and anyway, uh, I did want to, I did that's notice the one of the August 17th meeting. Yes, it's the August 17th meeting. Did, yep. do I, I'm sorry, I did all the talking here, Marlene. But That's all right. Marlene, you're the one who, she's the one who actually told me all about this. And I watched it last night, and it was very, very interesting. Entertaining, <laughs> wasn't it? <laughs> I, I would, it, yes, it was. <laughs> Espe especially for a grinder pump owner, it, it, it was a special. Now, Marlene, I, I did want to, uh, I did have notice one other thing while I was here. Yeah. I took a look at your alarm box. Okay. And I noticed that your alarm box does not have a red twist tie. Now, are you familiar with the red twist tie? No. Okay, did you ever receive a red twist tie? Not that I know of. Did you, was your grinder pump inspected by Weston and Samson? Yes. Were you present for the inspection? Yes. Okay, now, on mine, and I, my understanding was on all of the inspections, a red twist tie was to be added for security hmm. on the uh, alarm box the reason why you want security on your alarm box is you don't want intruders, accidental or otherwise, to be getting into your alarm box. Right. Marlene, did you remove that yourself? No. Have you been messing around with the inside of your alarm box? No. Okay. <laughs> Great. So, 
I'm gonna, I've, I've been checking on some of these, and this could represent a problem in town because it's possible that Weston and Samson might have run out of the red zip ties in certain areas. Oh. And they stopped putting them on. And I noticed when there's been repairs, it's possible they've been taking them off and not replacing them. I, I will say that we had a grinder pump owner who had a problem. When they came to his house and saw that the zip tie was removed, they accused him Ugh. of getting into his alarm box and causing his failure. Okay. Okay, and he had to pay for that call out. So this is something that could actually cost you money. So I want everybody to check to see if they have the zip tie. I have sent out emails about it before, but um, I'm hoping that this uh, video will get a bigger response so for that. So I should that. call them? Well, I wouldn't call them right away, but I'm going to look into this. Okay. I might contact them on behalf of everybody and just ask what is happening. Why don't we have the zip tie? Okay. Did you change the policy? Is it okay for us not to have a zip tie? Things like that. Okay. So just so we do the right thing and let them know that something's going on here. Sure. Okay, um, this has been a, kind of a long video, but I think it was uh, very important. Marlene, thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, now, bye-bye.